So this has been my sandpaper storage solution for the past few years. It served its purpose, but today I'm upgrading and building a more practical solution that'll allow me to keep all my sandpaper and sanding discs organized, along with my sanding accessories, and make them all easily accessible. The design is really simple, and there are plans available if you're interested. You'll find a link down below. It's assembled with just nails and screws, so the only challenge really is making these dados consistently and having them all line up. So that's the first thing I'll do using just a regular table saw blade, no dado stack required. I'm going to cut all the dados on a single panel that I'll then cut up into four parts. This will make the process much easier and less prone to making mistakes. I'll start by setting the blade height to about 1 8 of an inch or just a hair over that. I'll make a test cut on a scrap piece of plywood to dial it in. Then lock down the blade height. I can now grab my panel and start cutting the dados. I'll start by setting the fence 2 inches away from the blade, then run the panel through to make the first cut. The key to this operation is to figure out how far you need to move over the fence to make the second pass and widen the groove just enough so it'll fit a quarter inch piece of plywood. I did a test on a scrap piece and figured out that I need to move the fence away from the blade by 3 16 of an inch to get the exact data width that I need. I can now run the panel through again and test the fit just to be sure. Perfect. Okay, next I'll just keep moving the fence away from the blade to make the other dados. The exact measurements are all included in the plans. So now I can just switch to autopilot and move the fence to the next distance, run the panel through, then move it by 3 16 and run it through again. Then keep repeating the same process until I reach the end of the panel. With all the dados cut, I can start dividing the panels into parts. I'm only going to cut the left and right sides at this point and then stop. That's because the two inner dividers need dados on both sides. So I reset my blade height to 1 8 and repeated the same process as before to cut all the dados on the opposite face. And FYI, they should mirror exactly the opposite side. Once all the dados are cut, I can cut the inner dividers to their final width. Like I said before, I'm keeping this design super simple using screws and butt joints, but feel free to add some more advanced joinery if you'd like. I'll use these clamp squares to make sure the corners are square, then start assembling the outer frame first before adding the inner dividers and then the back. Hey, did you know that Princess Auto sells all sorts of screws for wood, metal, decks and more? They also sell these great little organizers too, which are perfect for screws. I'll use some one and a half inch screws, making sure to first drill countersink pilot holes. Next, I'll install the middle dividers. I cut these spacers out of some scrap MDF to make sure I get the spacing just right. I can just drop them in, then use some more screws to secure the dividers. I cut a back panel out of quarter inch plywood and install it simply using some glue and some brad nails. I'm going to add some pullout trays that will slide into each pair of dados and essentially create little cubbies. I'll start by cutting up a bunch of evenly sized blanks, then shape a pullout tab of sorts. The fit looks good sliding smoothly, so I'll now trace out the shape of the tab onto one of them that I'll use as a template, using combination squares and a nickel for the rounded corners. I taped them all together in stacks so I could cut them out faster, and this will also help me get a consistent shape for all the pieces. My bandsaw curve cutting skills still need some work, but that's nothing my spindle sander can't clean up. A little careful sanding will make all the curves even and smooth. That's better. I 
kind of like the look. It feels a bit retro, like kind of an old mail sorter or something like that. To mount it on the wall, I'll use a French cleat system. You've probably seen me do this before because I find it's the easiest way to mount things to my concrete walls. I'll just tilt my blade to 45 degrees and rip this 3 quarter inch ply roughly down the middle. I'll then glue and screw one part to the cabinet, making sure to screw into the frame, and the other part on the wall. I bet you're wondering why my cleat doesn't extend the full length of the cabinet. It should, but I have some funky bulges in my wall that would interfere, so I'm cheating a little. The cabinet won't hold much weight, so it should be fine. Anyhow, I installed the other half of the French cleat using a hammer drill to make the holes, then secured it with some Tapcon concrete screws. I can now simply hang the cabinet on the cleat and tap it into place. Alright, time to load it up! And if I'm getting organized, I might as well pull out the label maker, right? I have both 6 inch and 5 inch sanding discs, so I put the 6 inch discs on the left and the 5 inch discs in the middle. That's hard to say by the way. And kept the right side for the sanding sheets. I've still got room left over to store my detail sanders, sanding blocks, sponges, and all of my sanding accessories. There's even a spot for those gently used pieces that still have a little life left in them. Hey, hope you enjoyed the video and don't forget to grab the plans if you're interested. Until next time, thanks for watching, see you soon.